Welcome to the Thrive Today podcast. I'm Natalie Bourne. I'm the media host for Thrive Today and the founder of Innovation Meets Leadership. Our goal at Thrive Today is to help you take the authority of God's word and connect it with your success at work. Well, today we're talking to Dr. Chris Bowen. Dr. Bowen is the founder of Living Faith International Ministries in Forest Park, Georgia, and he is the author of 11 books with uh, his newest title entitled uh, Beyond Five Star Quality, and he has become, it has also become his number one best-selling book, selling thousands of copies in seven different countries. Welcome to the podcast, Chris. It is fantastic to be with you, Natalie. Such a pleasure to be here today. Well, thank you so much for joining us. You've written several different articles in uh, Thrive Today, and I just love getting to read your content. You're also, uh, you host your own podcast. You do a bunch of things. So I thought today could be just a tour of not only those different books you've written, but also just some of the wisdom that you've picked up from um, from the Lord, honestly, over all these years. And I think that the ladies will really um, glean from you today. Absolutely. My heart is to really see people financially free. And with that, um, I've had several different companies right now. My first company was a flop. And I think that was my most successful company because that one taught me how not to run business. So today we own three companies, all totally debt free. And we're really, if you follow me on social media, hashtag living my dream. Okay. Living my dream. That's awesome. So let's talk about financial freedom for a second, because this was one of the um, articles you wrote for the ladies. And I think it's really important to achieve financial freedom. I thought when I read your article, man, you really have a, a different take, a really interesting take on that that I haven't read before. So I'd love to spend just a few minutes talking about um, you know, financial freedom, the journey, and like what it means to you. Yeah, financial freedom is something that I feel like that anyone can have, but I think they need somebody to walk them along the way. Um, my family never was actually financially free. I grew up in a household that was told that you'll always have a car note, you'll always have a house note, so make sure you have a nice one. Well, I found out that all that was lies. You don't have to have a house note. I haven't had a, a car note in oh my goodness, 20 years, a house owned probably wow. 15 years, and now we live in three locations. We bounce back and forth, and that's the freedom that we have. So I really try to help people understand what it takes to be financially free and what that means. A lot of people feel like that's a bigger house, a nicer car, but it's really the fun kingdom. That's why God lets us obtain wealth. And so I really try to help people get the grasp of why they need to be financially free so that they can really truly live their destiny. And only 5% of Americans today really live their destiny. And so my goal is to pull those dreams out of them to see why they're really on earth and to help them pursue. And, I, and it always, every time includes being financially free. Wow. You know, as I'm listening to you talk about that, I think that's real. I remember, um, you know, growing up, taking on student loans for right. undergrad, for grad school. And I remember a friend of mine saying, it's free money. Like we should just take it. And what I found was, Hey, guess what? It wasn't free. And so it took me years to pay off cars, to pay off student loans, to pay off all those things that I was just thought were kind of, Oh, we'll figure it out later. And to get to the other side and, and become debt free myself, what was your catalyst? I mean, I know for me, it was, uh, it was suddenly becoming a single mom and realizing like I'm in debt up to my eyeballs and this is terrifying. I remember praying a prayer. God, if you'll help me get out this out of this, I will never put myself in this situation again. Yeah. And once you experience that debt, you really don't want to go back to that. But a lot of people becomes a mindset and a lifestyle for them. So I had to really determine that I did not want to stay broke my entire life. I was very poor. My wife and I, when we first started, we were so poor. I, I, I joke around at a lot of seminars that we were po. We couldn't afford the OR. We were that poor. And so I realized that's not something we wanted for the rest of our life. And I certainly didn't want my children and my grandchildren to operate in that. And so I really started doing research. I found people that had been financially free. I started talking to millionaires. I started sitting at those tables, even though it was uncomfortable to find out what did you do? I was doing every seminar that I could reading every book that I could, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, my favorite ever is Three Feet from Gold, just something that would inspire you and keep you moving forward. 
in that, we was able to found, find our financial freedom. So we had a, a gentleman that was a business owner that just did not like me, but somehow I found favor with him. And he really taught me everything that I know today about financial freedom. He wasn't saved. In fact, he was an atheist, but I knew that he had what I needed in my financial life. And so to this day, we're still best of friends. He's almost 80 years old, but I really realized that this piece of my life is what he had. He was the key to that. And because of that today, we're living financially free. Wow. You know, I, I want to just pause and say there's power in one, you know, identifying somebody that can be a mentor to you. And then secondly, even someone that didn't like you, I think most of us would say, forget it, you know, right. your loss and move on. But you pressed into what that person had that you needed. And I think that's pretty important for people to hear. Yeah. And this guy was the key. I was getting ready to build an $8.8 .8 million sanctuary in the heart of Atlanta in the poor section of town. And no one would fund us. No one would give us money. And he was the one that came in and said, I want to run you out of town. I just don't believe in what you're doing because wow. he was atheist. And long story short, he was the one that actually came in. He built the building for me. He funded the building with his own money and then took me to the bank and said, give this man a loan. And that all happened. And so even though I got cursed out literally every day of my life, and this is what Christians will say, they would say, pastor, you don't have to do that. You don't have to put up with that. Well, I did because no one else was going to give me a loan. No one else was going to build the building. And I knew that God gave me favor with this heathen of a man. So in the midst of that, he did get saved uh, about six months after the building was built. And so he became my right-hand man in ministry. So we have to stop looking at what we think the package is going to look like. This is what it's going to come through because the Bible says wealth comes slowly. And we have to identify that it comes to us as we can handle it. A lot of people, if we had wealth today, we would spend it on boats or houses and we really not understand. But when you get it slowly, you really learn how to manage what God blesses you with. Wow. This is such a powerful story. It, it reminds me of like Isaiah 45, where, you know, basically Cyrus, right? He does all this stuff for God's people and yet he's not a believer. And God says, you know, you won't acknowledge me, but still you're going to do all these things for the people of God. And so it sounds like God just dropped a Cyrus into your, your lap and, and helped you really, you know, bring forth the, the plan that God had for you through, through this person. Yeah. And we, we were going around 285, the bypass of Atlanta one day, and I was ordering structure steel for the building. And I put a, a, an order in for over a million dollars worth of steel. And he started laughing. I said, what is it? He said, did you think that you would ever be using the million dollar figure? And I said, no, I didn't. And so then I made it personal. And I said, you know what, if I can do this for the church and for a company and a business, I surely can do this for my own life. If we think what we can have, if we can really put our mindset in being really, truly free. A lot of people are so bound that they have to go to work. I go to work now. I'm busier than I've ever been in my life. I'm running three companies. I'm a professor at a university. I'm building three houses. Uh, I have a, a housing division. Uh, I'm doing a lot of things right now. I own a coaching service. I'm working for a dream releaser coaching as well, training coaches. I'm extremely busy, but it's because I want to be. It's not because I have to be. And I can do that from wherever I am in the world. And it's because of the financial freedom. When I retired from my church at 51 and a mega ministry in Atlanta, people's like, how do you, you're the founding pastor. How do you take your hands off? The reason founding pastors typically don't take their hands off is because financially they can't afford to. And that's unfortunate for them. And it's also unfortunate for the congregation. I knew that after 27 years, my season was done. And I can tell you the last six years has been the most profitable, the most blessed years of my life, because I realized that was God's work. It wasn't mine. I left the ministry on a high. I was financially able to leave that. I didn't, didn't get anything from that. I just simply said, okay, God, what's the next season? And knowing no one else and what to do, the Lord opened the door in 235 days the first year I was in the air. So God makes a way if he knows our heart, and he certainly does, and he really sees what we're trying to do. So money will follow us. It will. If, if we do the right thing, money follows us, and money certainly follows ministry. Gosh, that's so powerful. And I, I, I feel like people need to really just slow this down, listen to this again, and just think about in the areas of, of our own lives where we're holding on to things that if we would release it, God would bring even a bigger blessing in. He would bring even more provision, more people in to help us carry the true vision that he's calling us to carry in this next season. So I want to talk about this season and talk a little bit about this book you wrote, 
five star entrepreneur because I feel like this is something that um, the women listening to this podcast probably need to get their hands on. The five star entrepreneur is something that I I just recently it's a, a new release that's only been out about six months and we're just now taking a hold of that. But my desire is for everyone to be financially free. I want them to taste it. Once you don't have a car note, you never want another one. That's right. If you, if you pay cash for a car, you will go lesser of a car. Yes. Uh, if you uh, if you finance it, you're going to you know well it's an extra twenty dollars for the rims. It's an extra this, and so we get something that we really can't afford. We're trying to please the Joneses, and that's not the principle. So what I'm really trying to teach in this book is how you can become a millionaire. And a lot of people says a million dollars is not a lot of money today, but it's more than most people have. So we start with that figure. And I really try to walk them through in 10 years. And I've done this uh, with 14 people right now. I've coached them through the process in 10 years to become millionaires in 10 years. And it's very simple. But uh, the first day that I started, I had 150 people that I handpicked that I knew was going to be a millionaire. I lost 100 in the very first day. And let me tell you why. It was simply taking a thousand dollar investment, not in me. I didn't charge anything. It was a thousand dollars invested however you want. So let me ask you, Natalie, if you had a thousand dollars today, could you double it in 12 months? Yes. Everyone can. Everyone everyone can double a thousand in a year. If you can do that, I can walk you through becoming a millionaire in 10 years. It's this simple. If you can double a thousand, let's say you sell candy bars at a dollar, you have to sell a thousand candy bars to make your thousand dollars. Well, in year two, you now have 2000. Can you, it's the same amount of money. It's doubling it, doubling it to 4,000. Can you do that? Well, yeah, but now you may have to do candy bars and, you know, some other kind of candy, something else. So by the year six and seven, you're now realizing that each year your mind has expanded. You've grown bigger. You went from 1,000 to two, two to four, four to, uh, to eight, eight to 16. Now you're at $32,000. A lot of people was like, I never had that much money. That's good. But you can't stop there. you got to expand your mind again. If you expand your mind 10 times in 10 years, you can be a millionaire. So I have a friend that started off by doing exactly that, started selling candy bars at a dollar a bar. Today, they own the Godiva at one of the biggest malls in the nation, bringing in $2.8 million in a year. And so their mind had to grow from a candy bar door to door to now a kiosk, a kiosk to a store, to a store, to uh, the Godiva. And so that's where their mind expanded. Most people cannot expand. So again, the, the Bible says that money comes slowly. Wealth comes slowly. So it gives you time in one year to start saying, okay, I did it this year, but I have to think bigger next year. And I got to think bigger the next year. So it's all about a mindset of becoming debt-free and sacrifice. There's things that you have to sacrifice in order to be debt-free. Wow. That's so good. You know, you talk about in your article that you, you talk about the fact that it's not, money is not just about, you know, dollars and cents and price tags you also kind of talk about this idea of true true wealth being across all aspects of your life Mm -hmm. yeah i I think wealth is much bigger than just money um i'm a grandfather of four uh i love i love being a grandfather that's why we moved we were stationed in atlanta for 39 years and i realized that my family was all three hours one way two hours another way and so we sold our house in Atlanta. We bought a smaller house in both locations. So I live one month by one set of grandkids. I live one month by another set of grandkids. Then I got a vacation home where I get away from all of them. So it's about family. It's about really your relationship. It's about the connections that you make in life. You never know of who that who you're, you, who you're sowing into. And I think that we need to make that very conscious. What I have, I want to sow into young men. I was at a mall the other day, and this guy had three T-shirts in his kiosk. And I went by and said, what are you doing? He said, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to this new business. And I could see he didn't have the proceeds. He didn't have the money to make it happen. So I talked to him. I gave him a copy of my book and I connected with him and I said, you're an entrepreneur. And I, I'm pretty much sure that he will fail at this business, but that is going to be his greatest sign of success because he will learn by selling these t-shirts of how not to do business. Having only three labels is not enough. Being at a small kiosk in the mall that's closing down is not enough, but it's going to teach him something. So I think that you have to have people above you teaching you, and you have to have people below you that's learning from you. So we all know the the famous quote, which is so important, that we are the average. People get mad when I say that. You're just average. And I would say to you, Natalie, and I've never met you in person, you're average. But what are you the average of? The five people that we hang around. 
If we hang around broke people, we're going to remain broke. If we hang around negative people, we're going to remain negative. If we hang around wealthy people, they're going to teach us how to obtain wealth, and we're going to teach people how to become wealthy. So I think it's more than just money. It has to be relationship. It has to be our family. It has to be our physical fitness. I'm very much into that because I really believe that what good is it to have money if we're not in shape to spend that money? Or what good is it if we're doing all these things, but we're not mentally in the right place to be able to uh, absorb that, to take it to other people? So I think it has to be a full body. It has to be everything, body, bolt, uh, soul, mind, spirit. That's so powerful because I, I do think that typically, especially in the work world, you kind of fixate on one of these areas, right? So you fixate on financial freedom, or maybe it's it's health, or maybe it's just doing an amazing job at work, but the idea that you have to look at it across all these different areas and adjust accordingly so that you can bring your best self. The other thing I love that you talked about is failure. I think that failure is never fatal if you don't stay down and if you learn from it. And so I just love some of the concepts of, of the idea and how lightly you say, hey, he's probably going to fail, but it's a good thing. And I think people need to hear that you know, failing at something is the, sometimes the only way we learn. We don't really learn from our wins. We learn from our failures. Yeah. For every success that we have, we typically have seven failures. So Babe Ruth was known as the home run king, but he also was awarded the same year uh, in the World Book of a Guinness Book of World Records as the most strikeouts, the same year that he had the most home runs. So he failed many times, but his failures caused him to succeed. My first company, I never will forget this. I was, oh my gosh, in my early 30s, I thought I could take the world. So I bought this business that was unique. You walk in the middle of the building and it was a batting cage. But you go to the right, you could tan. You go to the left, you could do your hair. And it's all one big open concept. I realized the day that I bought it that I hated what I bought because I knew nothing about hair, nothing about tanning and nothing about baseball. And so I bought this business and for six years I struggled. I really, really struggled. And we ended up selling the business for $120,000 loss. Mm -hmm. And it was in the midst of 2008 crash. And uh, yes. so they, they just said, you know what, uh, we're just going to make it a wash. And I refused to let the bank lose that $120,000. And they're like, no, everybody's doing it. It's okay. I said, no, but I signed a commitment to you. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I decided for the next 10 years that we would pay that $120,000 back, even though we were not responsible for it. Wow. It was during that season that God let us obtain wealth. We, uh, we started flipping homes. We have flipped now about 130 homes. We were stuck with 19 because the market crashed. And um, because of that, our bank shut down. And then FDIC came after us because they are only an insurance company. It was in that process that because we did the right thing by a failing business that God did not let the next one fail. The FDIC took us to court to foreclose on all 19 properties. Wow. I kept making the mortgage every single month. And the judge said, you can't foreclose. They said, but we're an insurance company. Well, watch this. After doing the right thing for over a year, the FDIC said, we want to give you half of these properties if you will pay the other half off. They gave us two years to pay those properties off. And that's where our wealth began. So it began at the failing of the business. Whenever we went through the next one, that because nothing we had done, but because the market crashed, we continued to do the right thing and God elevated us. That's where our wealth came from, by doing the right thing. So many people are looking at doing something crooked or not having integrity. To obtain finances, you have to use integrity. Whatever that is, if you owe taxes, pay your taxes. Okay. Pay your tithes. Give, you, you give freely. Give that 10% away. It's so important because if you don't do right with what you have, God cannot bless the remaining part. I can give what's in my hand, but when I do, God releases what's in his. That is so, that's so powerful. And I, I want to hover over this, this moment that you and your wife had where you made this huge decision um, to, to do something you didn't have to do. I mean, most people would have been in the kind of the bailout, you know, category with, you know, with everyone else and just pulling the rip cord. But there was a decision that you guys made because of, um, commitments and integrity that you guys had as a couple. And I, I want to just go a little deeper on that because I'm sure that wasn't an easy decision at that time. How did you wrestle with that? And how did the two of you 
get on the same page to say, this is what we're going to do. This is what God's called us to do. Yeah. Well, let me say my wife has been amazing through our 37 years of marriage. Uh, every house we've ever lived in, she's never seen. Uh, all the houses <laughs> I've bought, she's never, she's never looked at. She's always just trusted me. And she always knows that even if I buy the dump, it's going to be the nicest house when I get done. So she's always had that kind of faith in me. But I've always been probably to the extreme in integrity. Uh, I don't believe that me as a Christian and as a man and as a father, that I should pay a bill late. Uh, I can tell you in my entire life, I have never paid an electric bill late. I have never had a water bill late. Even in my struggle, I felt like they were kind enough to give me water in advance. Therefore, I had to make sure that bill was paid. If I had to go out and work a second job, if I had to go cut somebody's grass, I've always made sure that my integrity Whatever I signed that I did. And people will say this, well, you have a five-day grace period, and you do. But for me, now that's not for everybody. That's just, again, I'm an extremist on this. I believe that if someone was nice enough to give me a mortgage on my house, and they said I wanted it on the 12th of the month, it was my responsibility to make sure they got it on the 12th. And I think that when we keep our word that God sees our honor, and, and he honors us in that. Um, my wife and I struggled so much. I can't even tell you how much. Our first house was $46,000. It was a burnout. The house had burnt down, and I went in thinking I could build it back up, and I did. And I remember us struggling with three boys at home, at small infants, and I was only making uh, $250 a week in ministry. My house payment was $300 a month. And this man, the same man that I was telling you about that hated me, sat down with his wife. He lived in a multi-million dollar mansion. And he sat in my house and he said, how much do you owe on this? And he, I was offended. It offended me that he asked me because I knew what kind of wealth he had and I was struggling. And I started to be really smart to him, Natalie. I started to say, it's none of your business. That's what I wanted to say because we had not yet built relationship. But I walked off and he followed me. He said, I asked you a question. I asked how much you own this house. And finally, I swallowed my pride and I said, we owe $28,000 on this house. He looks over at his wife and says, write the man a check and pay his house off. So again, doing the right things, God will always honor. He will always, always honor. So my wife and I have decided that God had blessed us so much that one day we wanted to do the exact same thing. We walked into a church about seven years ago. The pastor was struggling. They were having a hard time paying their mortgage, their rent. And uh, my wife and I looked at each other at the same time and said, this is it. And we were able to go up to him and hand him a deed for a house and say, God says to release this to you. That's wow. what financial freedom is about. And I get all emotional talking about it because we were poor. We were broke. And we don't want to hoard it up for me or even my kids or my kids' kids. I think that the Bible says there's enough wealth that I can have plenty. My kids can have it, my grandkids. But that doesn't mean I have to be selfish now. The more you release, the more that comes to you. And so when we release that house, God really opened the floodgates of heaven for us. And so I, just, I can't say enough that I think God wants everybody listening to this podcast to be financially free, but it all starts in the heart and then it goes to the mind and then it goes to the hands. And once we get it right, God can truly bless us and let us become financially free. Wow. This is so powerful. Well, I want the women to not only connect with you, but for you to, you were telling me before we hit record the various different books that you have um, written. So if you could just share where people can follow you. And then if you could just, um, just tell us all the different books you've written so that these ladies can avail themselves to all the materials that you have available. Absolutely. The best way is on my web and it's www.drchrisbowen.com. Also the same as my email address, drchrisbowen at gmail. Dot com. Uh, so those are the best ways. Also, um, I'm very personal. I believe everything is in, you know, I'm very busy, but I have connections and I love people just to send a text. I never am too busy for that. So if somebody is, is struggling and they just need a book, I don't even mind sewing a book into their life for free and just text me at 678-409-0010. Three books that have done really extremely well. My first book, as you mentioned, has gone into seven countries, thousands of copies, and that's called Beyond Five Star Quality. That's more about customer service, how you take customer service. That book I wanted for the church, um, but it didn't really go that way. Corporate America has, has gotten it. I went undercover in my church, knowing I was the friendliest church in the world, 
And so I went in my church, my church was all African-American and I went in as a 78 year old African-American homeless man. And I was put out three times that showed me that my church was friendly, but they weren't friendly to visitors and it rocked my world. And that's where that book book stemmed from of how we treat people when no one is looking. My company, Five Star Development now goes into churches as mystery shoppers. And I take to the pastor things that they would never do in front of them. And so that was my first one. Then I, I, I realized that people needed a step further in their finances. And I wrote uh, Beyond Five Star Finances. This tells you 15 things you can do uh, to uh, open the witness of heaven of God's hand and 25 things that will shut God's hands. And so that one just kind of helps you get started. And then the Five Star Entrepreneur is called, uh, you know, the Five Star Entrepreneur because it's owning your own freedom. As long as you have a nine to five job, you'll never be able to expand. Typically, you have to have something that's your own. And in today's society, to be financially free, it takes six streams of income. So that book tells you and teaches you how to do that. You can't have six jobs. You have to have your money working while you sleep. And so I give you some ideas and really help you to create some sources of income of how you can do that, whether it be through the stock market, whether it be through an online store, but it has to be six streams of income. If you go back to the 50s, only the man worked, but there was only one car. The wife stayed at home. She cooked. Today, we don't have kitchens and houses. We don't need them. Nobody, nobody eats at home anymore. You know, we have to have those six streams of income. Even the kids have $150 cell phones. When I was a kid, if we ran, you know, you had to wait certain hours to call, even on a house phone, to cross county lines. And so all that has changed. So now it takes six streams of income. The husband works, the wife works, and then they have other streams coming in. So that book actually helps you to really decipher how to become financially free and own your own freedom. Wow. This has been so incredible. I, I'm excited to get a hold of some of your books and just to, to start to learn from you. And so I just want to say thank you because I'm I'm just I've got a whole page of notes over here and I've just been really enjoying this conversation. And of course I was shocked at the end when you talked about going undercover into your own church. And so I can't wait to pick up the book and read about that story as well. This has just been such a fun and phenomenal time, Dr. Chris. Yeah, I think there's even a, a picture of that uh, in the book. It's going kind of global. Uh, it, it went everywhere when I first did it, and everybody saw it as a lot of fun, but it was the most discouraging day of my ministry I bet. because I realized that people were not really who they are when the pastor's not looking. That's right. and so there's always things that we can do, and churches need to be five-star. We really do. We need to make sure that we have and give the best experience. When somebody feels valued, they'll come back. Do those little things that, that, that stand out above, you know, True and Kathy got that concept in Chick-fil-A yes. and we need to take that and say, this is what we do. We need to make people feel bad. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time today. This has been awesome. It has been my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, to our listeners, we want to thank you for joining the Thrive Today podcast. Head over to thrivetoday.com to learn about how you can be a member of Thrive Today. Ladies, as you live your life, we want you to do it with leadership, community, and strength. And don't forget to thrive. We'll see you next time.